Hello, hello. I, we are not just tied by rendering, but also I did philosophy minor in university as well. So I thematically connected these two. Ray tracing on the GPU is the formal title because I pitched it to someone and they were interested in it. But the truth is, it's really Steph loves excuses to talk about rendering. So you may remember from my talk, I explicitly mentioned I have basically no artistic interest or uh, ability. So if you're looking at this and thinking, but Stephanie, that is professional quality art. You should congratulate yourself because I took this from an NVIDIA presentation that was given at GDC just this year on path tracing. We can get into path tracing versus ray tracing later if you want. We're going to stay on focus because I have four minutes and five seconds left. So we have light from a light source and it bounces around and so that is the ray that we are tracing as it goes through the world and that is how it works in the world, light from a light source. But the problem is, is that in the world, things like this happen. And if you're thinking that's not particularly useful or efficient in using our hardware resources, you're right, because the camera's over there. So we don't trace things in that way. We trace things as they are going backwards and collecting information. Now, we go tracing a lot of different things, see what's blocked from the light sources, see what's bouncing around. All of this is how we would think about it on the CPU. And that's how it's been used traditionally for decades. But um, we're starting to look at it on the GPU for games. We need to know a little bit about how it processes differently on the CPU versus the GPU. I think of the CPU, since a lot of computers have eight cores, as the fellowship of the eight, which is a lot like the fellowship of the ring, but after Boromir died. <laughs> so um, the reason why it's like the fellowship of the ring is because each of the cores can do hero actions. They can think independently, they can communicate with each other, they can do really fancy things like out of order execution, branch prediction, really cool stuff. And the way that this CPU hides latency is by the cache system, which doesn't tie to the analogy, so we're gonna flip to go to the GPU. Now the GPU is more like an army. You have hundreds, thousands of different threads and they're not able to do these hero actions. They are not able to do out of order execution. They are in lockstep. They don't do branch prediction. They must do the exact thing as the other. If there is a delay because you need to fetch from memory, then you rip off what is the current in flight and you throw on new threads. And so it covers it through just volume and covering the latency. So what happens with branches on the GPU? Well, um, if this, the last march of the ends fills you with a little bit of sadness, then the image did exactly what it's supposed to do. Because on the GPU, it basically turns into instead of, it becomes in series. So if you're gonna say that one half of the threads executes the first case and the other half executes the second case, then it's gonna go in order, first case and then second case, and it's gonna use all of those threads at the same time. So it's really inefficient. And that's a problem because when you go on the GPU, this is how we model ray tracing. See that beginning part? Oh, the lines, the white, they're not that clear, but they're all uniform and they make a lot of sense on the GPU side. Everything after that starts to branch and it becomes particularly evil because some of these are last a lot longer and have to go a lot farther before they find a light source. And that's where the problem is, is when you're in an army and you're all going together and you're trying to be efficient, it means that even if it's just because Joe went to the washroom, you gotta wait around. And so that's what happens with these long lasting threads. And I have made it under five minutes. All right, thank you.